when you function in love, your inside creates your outside. When you function in, in fear, the outside creates your inside. You're now tuned in to Power Podcasts, the Empower Hour. Peace and blessings, beautiful souls. I am Brandy L. Bates, author of Moonshine for the Soul, The Art of Grind, and many other books. I'll be your host for tonight. You can find me on Twitter at Soledad Francis and on Instagram at Brandy is winning um most all of these podcasts can be found of course they are on youtube um archived hashtag power podcast but you want to subscribe to us on itunes soundcloud and or uh, brandybates.podomatic.com to get them while they're live and direct mastering the breaking point survival mode survival mode when i think of survival mode when i think of all the times where my back has been against the wall where i've been between a rock and a hard place both figuratively and literally um how did i garner the strength how did i conjure the wisdom the know-how to push through right i can only say to you you know again people believe what you want to believe follow whatever doctrine or dogma or religion or belief system you choose whatever speaks to you but for me and mine Uh, Prayer has always gotten me through. And I'm talking about from divorce to losing everything to shit blowing up in your face, losing family members. I, you know, have now lost both parents from going through um, layoffs and and, and not knowing where your next is going to come from. Uh, Betrayal. having a knife put in your back how do you master those breaking points and one thing i can say to you is it definitely has come to make you stronger uh number two it has um everything to do with what you're made of what you go through shows you what you're made of right that's why some people never go through certain shit Some people have what some of us would call a a charmed life. You know, mommy and daddy helping them. You know, they constantly have somebody to wipe their ass, to fix their problems, to solve their issues, to put money in their bank, to hand them all the opportunities. They don't have to work for anything, you know. But when you really think about it, that's like you never can reach your level. When you're constantly coddled and constantly never able to go out um, from the shore. Because you can't fish on dry land. You can't fish on dry land. And, And what that means is that certain opportunities just won't even present themselves to you. Until you've demonstrated that you have the chutzpah. You have the strength. You have the ability to handle it. Like certain people, you like certain shit cannot be given to you because you wouldn't know what to do with it. Certain opportunities only go to certain people because they are built strong enough and Teflon enough to handle it. And it's not saying that you're weak or some people are better than others, but it's just saying that some can lift heavier loads. And you, as you master the breaking point in your life, you're going to keep getting deeper and heavier obstacles to deal with. But understand that those obstacles are just stepping stones, right? There is a powerful force within us, an unilluminated part of the mind, separate from the conscious mind, 
that is constantly at work molding our thought, our feelings, and actions. Sigmund Freud told us this, how bold one gets when you're sure of being loved. You know, when you loved, that's why they say love is the most powerful force in the world. Love is the most powerful energy, frequency, the love frequency is the most powerful in this universe, in this galaxy, in this reality, in this society. Because when you know you're loved, you know, people get real bold, just start talking shit, just do, you know, you can't tell them nothing. When they know they're loved, when they know they're supported, when they know they're uplifted, when they know they are accepted. Understand that you can't, you can't have a wave that's all trough and no crest. Just like you can't have a wave that's all crest and no trough. Clouds never last. Storms never last. I don't care how mighty the cyclone. I don't care how powerful the hurricane. I don't care how difficult the earthquake. Trouble never lasts forever. Everything can be rebuilt. Everything can be rebuilt. Everything can be restructured. Everything can be restructured, reconfigured, rehabilitated. Even the the notion of rehabilitation, you know, for people who your obstacle might be drug addiction or drug abuse or substance abuse. Uh, whether that's, you know, alcohol or hard drugs or opioids. To be totally rehabilitated, you have to understand what drove you, what drives a man or woman to depend on a substance, to abuse a substance you have to understand the psychology uh, of addiction the psychology of substance abuse if you will um sometimes it's it's hereditary sometimes it's 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 coming from someplace um but Trouble never lasts. It comes but for a season. And and mastering, mastering the breaking point is all about learning how to ride the waves. How good do you ride the waves, right? And it's all just really waves. Because I promise you, your job, your job, I don't care how much effort you put in or or how much you think they love you if something happens to you you will be replaced and they will keep going they will keep moving towards profits keep appeasing the board members and whoever runs the you know runs the show whoever stroking a check and you and, and and they'll be on to the next and when you keep you know when you keep that in mind you're like you know i, I you, you got to put this in perspective you know Please don't sacrifice your children's recitals and little league games and and, and being there for your family, being there for your kids, being there for the people who mean something to you for, oh, you know, I I, I can't make it because I got to go to work. Because a lot of times you only have one daughter or you only have one son, you only have one mom, you only have one dad, you know, but for a season, what separates those who stay married for a few years, you know, the average? Why is the divorce rate so high? What separates those who stay married for, you know, three years, five years, six or seven years versus those who stay married for 30 and 40 years? I'm not going to hold you long today because I know I got things to do and I know you have things to do. But it's how well both people learn to master their breaking point. And I honestly believe that the older generation, 
they have they I believe that they were I don't want to say they were stronger but I think certain limitations that were placed in society forced them to deal with their shit you know because women couldn't readily how as women today we can you know we can start our own businesses we can be entre entrepreneurs we can work our way up to the top we can own our own homes we can do things we're self-sufficient whereas in the past you know we didn't even have the right to vote we couldn't own any property we couldn't do anything without you know our father or a brother or a husband so forth and so on so as society has you know restructured and changed and shifted it's enabled us to do more, but at the same token, what has come with that is we've ditched a lot of the traditions and we've ditched a lot of the stuff that kind of enabled us to grow thicker skin, you know? If we are hunting the highest version of ourselves, the highest ver because I, I, I really just believe that too many of us we give the lower version of ourselves too much play it's too easy to just be like you know what i'm not gonna put forth any effort you may not say those words but it's evident in your behavior right it's evident in your attitude it's evident in everything about you your body language that you just don't care and you just you're not trying to you're not trying to work for it you're not trying to you know, but if we are hunting the highest version of ourselves, that's where the real coin is. That's where the real bag is. That's where the fame is. That's where the notoriety is. That's where the world is going to recognize you. That's where your legacy lives. The place where the, the highest version of yourself, that's the end of the game. That's the end of the board. When you win all the coins. We must learn to master the breaking point. If we are hunting the highest version of ourselves, we must learn to master the breaking point. Period. Most people run and flee when trouble gets too, too difficult. It's, it's just getting too hot. It's too hard. It's too much. The wall is too high. The water is too deep. The ammunition of the enemy is, is too powerful. Even the strongest among us, right? And by the way, by the way, call and check on your strong friends today when you finish listening to this. Call and check on your strong you don't know let me tell you something you don't know how some people very close to you who you think they got their shit together they hold it together well you have no idea how close to suicide that that person may be you have no idea the nightmares that that person may be enduring and waking up to you have no idea what they are internalizing check on them send a text message i'm thinking about you you on my heart i love you we love you we thinking about you it takes three seconds if you could craft a tweet you could check on your strong friends if you could send a snap check on your strong friends Make sure they're okay. Listen to them. Hear them. Sometimes you have to listen between the lines to what they aren't saying. Today, do that for me, please. Did you know that the child who was left to self-soothe, the child who was Half of our behavior as adults is a result of our childhoods. Half of the addictions, half of the uh, habits, uh, the way people function sexually, the way people function uh, on the job, how they function in the family structure as mothers, as fathers, is a direct result 
of what they had or did not have in childhood because we either become exactly like our predecessors, our parents, our creators, right? We become, we are a reflection of them in every way, good, bad, and indifferent. Or we try so hard to not be like them. We, we become so determined to not be like the family fuck up, right? Or to, 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 to abandon our children or to neglect uh, our family or to be a deadbeat dad, okay? Or to be a, 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 a depressed alcoholic mother. I don't know who I'm talking to. But did you know that the child who was left to self-soothe becomes either the adult who self-medicates or the high achievers always unconsciously, subconsciously, on a subconscious level, seeks validation in whatever ways they can cling to. So that's why you, you can have a man who is super successful, got all the money in the world, has all the cars, has the houses, has the bank accounts, has the real estate portfolio, but he loves hookers. He loves uh, uh, prostitutes. That comes from somewhere. That come that comes from somewhere. All men are not like that. When you can have a powerful woman, powerful, 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 went to school, you have your PhD, you have your masters, you were top of your class, valedictorian, tall, tan, and terrific, and have abysmal, abysmal self-esteem. Beautiful women. Don't value themselves. Choose the worst types of most abusive, most toxic relationships. The child who was left to self-soothe. These are the flowers who bloom in every season, your strong friends, because they're trying to learn to deal with their breaking point. They're at their breaking point. How many times are you at your, you know, at your breaking point? Like you're like back to the wall. But no one knows because you look because you look like you have it together. Check on them. And if this is you, understand that you can't be all things all the time to everybody. You can't be all things all the time to everybody body you can't pour from an empty cup the proverbial empty cup and oftentimes everything hinges on your ability to recharge your batteries let difficulty transform you let it transform you let it use you let it let it renew you Let it transfigure you. Let it strengthen you. And it will. You can't build muscle without resistance. Without resistance, you cannot build muscle. And whether you wanna build muscle or not, you're gonna face resistance. But let difficulty transform you, and it will. We just need to learn how to not run away. We need to learn how not to run away from struggle, from um, obstacles, from the breaking point. Because that's the first thing you wanna do. Because at the end of the day, we still are humans with the fight or flight hormone being produced, right? And more often than not, more often than not, if the if the if the if the opposition or the attack or whatever the stimulus is that we feel is 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 harming us or uh, 
Too much pressure, too much anxiety, too much struggle. We're going to run away from it. We're going to throw in the towel. We're going to wave the white flag. It's the rare, the rare few who, you know, don't mind and just run head forward like gladiators, Spartacus, right? Head for, head first into the storm. But progress, progress often masquerades as trouble. Never forget that. You are an electromagnetic being emitting a frequency. You're not just that meat suit. You're a human. Electromagnetic being emitting a frequency. Only those things that are on the same frequency as the one you are emitting can come into your experience. And so every single person, every single event and situation and circumstance and occurrence in your day is telling you what frequency you are on at any given time. And if you understand that everything is energy, you can also understand that everything you think, believe and feel consists of energy. Your attitude, your, your focus vibrates. And, and, and those vibrations affect the quantum fields that underlie and constitute and determine the outcome of physical matter. So it's kind of like when you throw a pebble into a lake, that pebble is the stimulus that in, interrupts the, you know, the, plus, the, the placid water, the placidity of the water, right? Same thing, your thoughts, your mindset, how you feeling, because how you think uh, on a day-to-day -day basis becomes your mood, becomes your baseline way of being. So that's why, you know, when we were growing up, you know, your mom would say, fix your face. Fix your face. You sitting there looking, you know, as we would say, a resting bitch face. You know, my mom would say, fix your face. Smile. Fix your attitude. Fix your attitude. Because how you operate on a day-to-day -day becomes your resting, like, basal metabolic way of being right your focus actually has the power to alter the appearance of your physical circumstances and in the small matters trust the mind in the large matters trust the heart because see sometimes it's not always about what you know it's not always about your education because a lot of times if we're being honest your education is only going to take you but so far only going to take you but so far but that work ethic baby your work ethic your attitude your ability to show up when you don't feel like showing up your ability to get your ass up out the bed when you feel like nothing more than to just stay there and say you know no all of those things determine ultimately how well you weather the storm and how well you master the breaking point. A lot of times mastering the breaking point is just, you know what, stay in the course, get up every day and, 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 and you know, like times when I've gone through stuff, no matter what, if I could get up, put my makeup on and get to work, I could deal with whatever came. You know, a lot of times it's about not allowing something to knock you off completely, knock you off course, right? You might stumble, you know, you, you, you're allowed to stumble, you're allowed to trip, but now falling every time, you can never get past that point. And so talk to your DNA, speak to your situation, speak to your situation today. I mean, speak to it with aggressive, uh, what, what do they say? <laughs> like you have to put hands on your situation and, and there is power of life and death in your tongue. And we forget this, the power of life and death, literally in your words, we cast spells every day based on how we're speaking. 
So if you can use your tongue to talk shit, you can use your mouth to spread the tea, gossiping, and other forms of diminished energy, then you can use it to build your empire. You can use it to build your self-esteem. You can use it to breathe life into your dreams that have been lingering on life support. Hello? How much did they first pay you to give up on your dreams? How much did they first pay you to give up on your dreams? And you thought, you know, this money is good. Let me go on and do, you know, it's good money. I'll, I'll go back to school. This is good money right now. I need this money. I'll, 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 I'll finish later. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this. I'll, I'll finish working on the book. I'll, I'll finish working on this business plan. I'll finish pursuing the idea, the dream of, you know, traveling the world. Whatever your thing is. I know damn well. If I asked you when you were seven or eight years old, I know damn well what you wanted to be. When you grow up, it was not a customer service rep. If I asked you when you were seven or eight years old, what you wanted to be when you grew up, I know it wasn't to be unemployed or to be a single mom on WIC or sweeping bathrooms, answering phones for an asshole. I know when you were seven or eight, you didn't want to drive for Uber or Lyft. Not saying those are bad things. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Don't get it twisted. Please do not put words in my mouth. But I know that's not what you wanted to do. I know that was not your first choice or your second choice. I know that was not your plan A. I know you had dreams. Big dreams. I can almost guarantee you're not operating at your capacity. I could put money on it. I can put money on it. I can put money on it. You are not operating at your level. You've been flying below the radar, playing it safe. Because something, you rubbed up against some shit and it knocked you on your ass and you decided, you know what? I don't want that smoke. Study any level of performance enhancement. Uh, for instance, Depression and, and, and many, many other forms of mental illnesses can be alleviated from exercise, working out, just working out. You'd be surprised how much can be just your life can be changed, not just on a physical level, but mentally and, 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 and psychologically from just getting up every day and going for a walk out in nature, going for a run, going to the, going to the water, going to the beach. Uh, from meaningful hobbies, you know, something that you're passionate about, that you like doing. It doesn't necessarily have to be about making money or trying to make a sale or trying to get a following. Just what you're into, your art or, you know, crocheting or baking cupcakes or drawing, whatever. For some, it might be giving yourself over to something outside yourself, your kids, your nieces, your nephew. The Girl Scouts, the boys, uh, the, the, the boys club, a pet volunteering. I can't tell you how much volunteering has made me get my shit together real quick. Real quick. Feeding the hungry. I don't, you know, I don't believe in bragging about the volunteer work you do. You know, just do the work. You don't have to, you know, showcase it and post the pictures. Just, just serve, you know, just serve. If you have more, give. If you have the time, give. If you don't have the money, but you have the time, give your time. Volunteer your time. If you have the money, volunteer your money. Volu give away your old clothes that you don't use. Somebody could use it. But when you meet people who 
would trade places with you with a quickness and you mad? You're crying? You're complaining? There are people who have it 20 times worse. You know, if you have if you have a roof over your head and you have food in your refrigerator and you woke up this morning and you were not in a hospital bed and you were not six feet below and you were not in prison and you have the activity of your limbs, let alone you have, you know, high speed internet and clean running water and central heat and air or in gorgeous car to get around, you're doing better than like 80% of the globe right now. You're wealthy. Master the breaking point. Put it into perspective. Put your, put your situation into its correct perspective. Will this matter five years from now? Will this matter 10 years from now? Will this change the trajectory of where you ultimately want to be? Or is it helping to move you a little closer? Remind yourself that your situation can be transformed in an instant. Keep shedding, keep shedding, keep shedding. Beliefs, fears, doubts, worn out ways of living. Old paradigms that you adopted. That's, I always say, you know, I can always tell when I'm listening to someone who was raised by parents of the depression era who all they know how to do is, is, is scrimp and save and struggle and, but they have no idea of the opportunities that have presented themselves in modern day. So they cling to these little jobs. They don't realize, you know, staying on a job till you 800 years old, old as Methuselah to, to get that gold watch and you know, retire with the gold watch and you've been in the same house for 80 years. That people are not living like this is the, this is the era and the age of the freelancer. We live in a freelance economy. Go get your bag. And if there aren't enough opportunities, cause there are, if you don't see them, create your own. But keep shedding. Shed those worn out ways of being. You're probably one belief away from everything turning out better than you could possibly conceive. Remember to remember. Your purpose is not what you do to bring home a paycheck. Your purpose is what you came to this planet to do with such intensity and veracity and passion that is, it, it becomes a calling. You know, what you came to do in only the way you can do it. Because, you know, it's, it's some shit nobody can really touch you on. You know, some people, you know, when you cook, it's just, it's just next level. It just is. It, it just is. When you, when you, when you apply your organizational skills. Your ability to persuade. Some people are so persuasive they could sell a polar bear a fur coat in the summer. Cause they're just they just have that gift of gap. They just they just do. They just got it. But whenever anything happens to you, there is a deep lesson concealed within it. Make this your year of growth. 2019. Make this your year of growth. The months are flying by. Step up. Step up. Every morning, prepare your atmosphere. Every morning. Don't start your day checking email and checking your timelines and checking your notifications. Prepare your atmosphere. Remind yourself Everything you put out there comes back to you harder. Just like a tree. From one seed comes groves and forests. From one fruit 
you can get a whole pasture. Put out a little, a lot comes back. You're already who you're going to be in another form. Just like the acorn has the whole oak tree living within it. The oak tree, the DNA of the oak tree lives in the acorn. Who you are going to become, you already are. But you have got to master the breaking point and be that goodness, money, happiness, effort, energy, love, whatever you put out, it comes back magnified. It comes back even bigger, even larger. It comes back multiplied. You give a little money, you get back a lot. You give a little effort, you're going to get something back from that. Listen to your gut. Follow your intuition. Your gut instinct is your most valuable natural asset. All mothers have it. All my moms, you already know what I'm talking about. You know when your kid is into some shit, you just feel it. You feel it. You know when something isn't right. You feel it in your bones. You feel it when your kids are up to no good. We just know. You just know. That knowing, that knowing is powerful. It's a gift. Get more information. Get out of your head and surround yourself with high performance, healthy, wealthy, happy people. Like real talk. When it comes to love, listen to the couples who have made their shit actually work, right? Because if you trying to build something with somebody, but you're listening to people who are miserable and, and, and messy and don't have shit, don't have a pot, don't have no motherfucking window, and this is who you taking your advice from? You deserve to be broke. You deserve to be miserable. You deserve all of the pain because you're getting, you're getting your counsel and your advice from a bum. When it comes to business, listen to successful businessmen and women, not merely intellectuals, you know, who just talk to talk. You know, it, it comes a time, listen, you know, it, 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 you can learn from the intellectuals, but when it comes to actual execution, listen to the doers, follow the doers, learn from their mistakes. You don't got to make the same mistake. You don't have to recreate the will. You, it's already enough shit out there. Go to the library. Half of the, half of the problems that we run into could be solved if we learn from other people's mistakes. Look at what they did that made them land flat on their face and don't do it. Take a different route, right? Always have an exit strategy. Don't enter into anything without a way out. Never corner yourself. By cornering yourself, I mean getting yourself into situations where you have to depend on somebody, where you have to depend on somebody to pick you up. You have to depend on somebody to bail you out. You have to depend on somebody or else you out on the street. Never compromise your values. Question everything, but never compromise your values. There has to be some things that you just will not do. Like there have to be lows, low points that you're just not willing to compromise. Cause at that point, if you, if there are certain things that you just like, you know, I really don't want to do this. It goes against everything within me and you still do it. Um, I feel like it compromises your future and it, it puts you almost like 10 steps behind. It's like in monopoly, you know, do not pass, go, go to jail and you miss your next turn. While, meanwhile, everybody else is, is progressing around the board, right? If you don't learn certain things in due season, uh, you, 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 you have to repeat it, right? Uh, whatever you don't take care of, it, it, it's almost like when you meet people who are older in life and, and they fucked up their childhood so bad or their teenage years or their young years, they just wasted in some way or the other that now, you know, they're having to catch up. 
you know, their credit is screwed up, so they can't buy anything. They don't have any cash. They don't have any money, so they can't do much. And that's a hell of a place to be when you have when you have terrible credit. And by the way, you know, filing bankruptcy is not gonna fix your credit. But when your credit is fucked up, you you can't buy anything. And when you can't buy anything, you have no real upward mobility, right? If you can't get uh, a good debt to start a business or to get real estate, it, it just, it puts you at a deficit where you're having to depend on people. You're having to depend on a fucked up job and you have to stay on a job that you hate because you don't have the resources to move ahead. Mastering the breaking point. Survival mode. The more you know, the safer you'll be. The more you know. The more you know. It's like having a, a road map of the grounds, a blueprint. The more you know. Knowledge is a safe harbor. The knowing. The knowing. Learn how to play with fire. Because there will be times where you are forced to play with fire. Learn how to maneuver in the darkness. The unfamiliar. Always an understanding that the darkness itself cannot hurt you. No matter how difficult things ever get. The situation cannot directly touch you. Everything you're feeling is connected to your mindset. Your thoughts about the situation. Not the situation itself. Someone once said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive. Because this world needs what you produce when you come alive. We need what happens when we when when we come alive. Unstoppable. Unfuckwittable. Unfadeable. Alvin Toffler said the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Alvin Toffler. Because the biggest opportunities are found where people complain. If you want to be richly rewarded, you want to be richly recognized? Find your place where people dump their problems. The more problems you solve, the more you'll be richly rewarded. But you got to be able to quickly, 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 quickly learn, unlearn what no longer works, what no longer fits, what you've outgrown and relearn quickly. You never want to be blockbuster video in an Amazon Prime world. Change is not merely necessary to life. It is life. <laughs> it is life. Pay attention to what's most ignored. To the parts of yourself that are ignored. Because we can't stop the future, but we can shape it. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful, amazing, healthy, wealthy, happy, abundant rest of your day. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>